predator, a goal-hungry striker once regarded as the best in the business. In his prime, this pocket-sized dynamo possessed an electrifying burst of pace, tremendous balance and a clinical finish. Born in a poor neighbourhood of Rio de Janeiro, Romario's road to glory was anything but a fairy tale. Despite his poor surroundings, it seemed he was always destined for the top. At 15, Vasco da Gama rejected the precocious teenager because they considered him too short to make the grade. However, two years later, the club decided to give him another chance. Turning professional in 1985 at the age of 19, Romario went on to win state league titles in 1987 and 88 and was the top scorer in both tournaments. After making his international debut in 1987, Romario was a member of the Brazilian team that won the silver medal at the 1988 Seoul Olympics. Following his seven goals on the world stage, the striker's glittering career took off. Signed by PSV Eindhoven, he moved to Europe, where Dutch fans marvelled at his magical displays for five seasons. While at PSV, Romario scored over 130 goals, won three league titles, three Dutch Cups and the Cup Winners' Cup. He looks like he's coming back to his best, and his best is just about as good as you'll find in the world. Romario had the amazing ability to bounce off his markers and create that extra yard of space for himself. His knack of scoring goals out of nothing is a natural attribute. He was born with it. Put simply, Romario was a genius of the modern game. Would you believe it? He made his World Cup debut at Italia 90, but played only one game as Brazil suffered a second-round elimination at the hands of Argentina. After his successful stint with PSV, Romario transferred to Barcelona in 1993. Under Dutch legend Johan Cruyff, he spent only one season with the dream team of Spanish football, but what a memorable season it was. Scoring 30 goals, the charismatic Brazilian was the Primera Liga's leading scorer as Barcelona clinched the championship and a place in the Champions League final. Romario carried his fantastic form into the 1994 World Cup and was a towering presence for Brazil in the USA. In the first round, he found the back of the final. Romario's goal knocked Holland out of the tournament. Romario's getting into the near post. Romario! And in a trice, they're ahead. Another goal against Sweden in the semi-final gave Brazil the chance to win their fourth World Cup and break a frustrating 24-year drought. In the final, the Italians' defence shut out Romario and Bobeto's striking partnership, and the game was decided on penalties. Brazil won 3-2, with Romario one of the three successful penalty takers. In addition to winning the Golden Boot Award, the role Romario played in Brazil regaining the World Cup was acknowledged when he was named Player of the Tournament. Completing what was without doubt the best year of his career, Brazil's World Cup hero was subsequently named FIFA World Player of the Year. The temperamental Brazilian returned to Barcelona after the World Cup, but played only 13 games before packing his bags and returning to South America. Flamengo secured his services for five million US dollars and with 34 goals in his first season, it proved to be a good investment. Romario was the leading goal scorer again the following season with 26 goals and Flamengo won the league championship. On the international scene, the combination of Romario and Ronaldo was proving to be a lethal strike force for Brazil. In 1997, they won the Copa America and the Confederations Cup, and Romario was named in the tournament's All-Stars team.
France 98 should have been another opportunity for fans around the world to admire the genius of one of the best strikers to have played the game. Instead, it was a disaster. A niggling calf muscle injury forced Romario out of the squad on the eve of the tournament, but he never accepted the decision and insisted he could have played. At 32, it appeared that time was catching up with him. Defying his age, Romario continued to knock in the goals for Flamengo until an off-the-pitch incident brought an end to their successful association. Throughout his career, Romario had never disguised his love of the good life. In this respect, he can be compared to some of football's other brilliant but flawed characters. This photo, taken at a nightclub just 24 hours after Flamengo failed to make the quarterfinals of the Brazilian championships, led to his controversial dismissal. However, Romario's old club, Vasco da Gama, took a risk and signed the volatile striker. The club's former teenage prodigy returned the favour with some brilliant performances, including a hat-trick in Vasco's Mocosa Cup victory of 2000. The following year, he won his first Brazilian championship title with Vasco and collected his third South American Player of the Year award. While Romario's love of the good life has been well documented, there's another side to the popular player that few people would perhaps know about. Using his celebrity status, he created a charity project for disadvantaged children that aims to promote education, health and team spirit through football. Romario believes that sport, and most specifically football, is a vital tool in reaching out to the children. It's a way for us Brazilians to have a better country. There's nothing better than sport to take these children, the future of our country, away from a wrong life. I hope that those people who are already contributing will continue. And for those who haven't started and are in a financial position to do so, I hope they will participate because our country needs it, especially the children. Following the disappointment of missing France 98, Romario dreamt of playing on the world stage just once more, but it wasn't to be. Over the years, his attitude to training, discipline and authority had never endeared him to any of the national coaches, and as expected, his name was missing when Brazil's coach Felipe Scolari announced his 23-man squad for Japan and South Korea. Pressed for a reason why Romario was excluded, Scolari said that the 1994 World Cup hero had been left out for tactical and technical reasons. There was overwhelming support for the prolific striker to be reinstated. Even the president of Brazil joined the campaign, but it was to no avail. Later, Romario wept as he thanked the public for supporting his bid to win back his place on the national team. At the age of 36, the last opportunity to compete against the world's best had passed him by. At the turn of the millennium, Brazilian football was being crippled by an economic crisis, and Vasco da Gama was just one of the clubs trying to survive this difficult period. As always, Romario had an opinion to express. This is a reflection of many bad things that have happened over the past years. Bad administration by various club directors, lack of competence and lack of honesty. That's the cause. And I think that not only the players, but everyone who makes a living from football in Brazil are going through a very difficult time. Unable to negotiate a suitable contract with Vasco, Romario transferred to Fluminense in 2002. Controversy followed the striker to his new club as teammates were upset at the salary he received in what were cash-strapped times. However, just a few months later, the striker suddenly departed Fluminense after receiving a lucrative offer to play in the Middle East for Qatari club Al Saad. His three-month contract was worth a reported $1.5 million. But Romario's problems began when he was prevented from playing in the Asian Champions League because he wasn't registered in time. He then fell out with a coach who wanted to change his style of play. The striker left Qatar after playing just three games in which he failed to score a goal. In June of 2003, aged 36, 
the controversial Brazilian returned home, where his main aim was to reach the magical mark of 1,000 career goals, a feat only the legendary Pelé has achieved. But it would take longer than expected, and more than one club, to reach that milestone. After two years with Fluminense, Romario returned to where it all started, Vasco da Gama, where his 22 goals led all scorers in the Brazilian championship. Rising 40, he then headed to the USA in search of his 1,000th goal, where he helped Miami FC to their first ever playoff series. However, the goals weren't coming quick enough for the aging playmaker, and it was back to his beloved Vasco da Gama after just one season in Miami. Returning at the end of 2006 was only a matter of time before Romario would realize his dream. With 999 goals to his name, Romario stepped up to take a penalty kick against Sport Recife in May 2007. The entire nation held its breath and with one simple kick, his dream came true. Slotting home a penalty kick in Vasco da Gama's 3-1 victory, it was time to celebrate. I thank God who gave me this opportunity. Really, I didn't expect it. Because to achieve a historic landmark like this, not only to me, but to my family and my friends, I think also to Brazil and to the world, it's an important thing to football. Although Romario admits his tally includes youth team, friendly and testimonial games, there are few who have even come close to the mark. Reaching his 1,000th goal in football, Romario could now retire a satisfied man. Although he's sometimes been referred to as a wayward genius, there's no doubt Romario is a master of his art. And having played the game with so much passion, it's hardly surprising that he's an immortal favorite of the Brazilian fans.